Well, look at this mess now. How is this going to get repaired? We're not going to repair it. We're just going to make a better one. So here's what I was thinking. We build a rack similar to what was there before. Maybe we add a shelf and a little horse. And here's a side view of what it'll look like. Well, I like that idea. Let's do that. So what are you going to do first? Well, I had a bunch of sticks left over from the last project, and I thought maybe they'd work good for this one. So I made this pattern jig out of a scrap of MDF, and the way it works is you have these little points that you can press into the wood to, to show you where to drill. Oh, that's cool. Using the punch just helps the drill bit point find its way a little easier. After the holes are drilled, I can put the pattern back on and trace around it. Then I can trim off the excess, making sure to stay away from the line. Next, I can flush trim the part to the pattern. And then you can just make 20 more. Yep. Hey, I recognize that. That's the little brace that holds the shelf. And this is the bracket that holds the rack at the correct angle. Are you going to use the same method to make these parts? Yeah, even though I only need two each of these, it still makes a nicer part than cutting them by hand. First, I can rough cut around the pattern. And then drill two holes, one for where the dowel is going to go through, and the other just for an access for the jigsaw. This is just to remove the bulk of the material out of this opening, because the flush trim bit will get the rest of it. Hey, that's pretty nice. Good job. Thanks. Next, I'll put a small chamfer on all the parts. Hey, I think you're trying to make me dizzy. Yeah, spinning the video like that probably wasn't the greatest idea. How about this? Yes, that's better. And those parts are coming out real nice. Yeah, I think so too. Those two. Next, I can assemble the rack portion of the boot rack. First, I'll slide all the parts onto the dowels, and then we'll get everything lined up and attach each rail according to the plan. Pretty nice. I had to improvise a clamp here because I didn't have any clamps small enough to fit between those rails. Next, I'll cut the uprights that hold up the shelf. I like your ruler stop. It looks like it works real nice. Yeah, I like it, and it's really accurate. Then I can attach the uprights to the rack. After a little bit of glue, I can clamp it on and add a couple screws. So what are you doing now? I'm pre-drilling for the screws that will hold the shelf braces on. And again, a little bit of glue and a clamp and get it attached. Next, I'll cut a chamfer on the bottom edge of the shelf. Just make it look a little better. And then a bunch of sanding, just to ease the edges. And then get it attached. So here I'm getting set up to cut that groove that will hold the panel that the horse is on. So I'll set the panel in those grooves and mark the corners that need to be trimmed off 
so that the panel fits. Hey, nice job, dude. So I cut a couple pieces of quarter inch mahogany to make all these little horse parts out of. So I'll just lay these out and use some spray adhesive, attach it to the wood, and then cut all the little parts out. Then I can pull the paper off and get each piece sanded. So the procedure here is you print a reverse image of your pattern, lay it out where you want it to be, and you use acetone to transfer the toner to the wood. Then just stick all the little pieces on. And there it is, a little horse. Next, I can get the back installed. I had a couple of these broken yard lights that I thought I could use to repurpose the LEDs for lighting the horse. Well, it seems more like you just want to put lights on everything. Yep, lights and horses. So the way these work is... They have a solar panel on the front with a little light sensor that uh, during daylight hours it charges the, the internal battery and then at night it senses that it's dark and it turns the light on and just keeps going through that cycle. So here I just need to get that wire out of my way and put it back together temporarily. So here I'm just getting rid of the connector because I don't really need that for what I'm doing. I need to make a little frame that holds these side by side so I can put them up in the window where they'll get sun during the day. Well, it looks to me like you already made the little frame. Yep, I guess I did. Okay, good enough. Now I just need to sand it and shape it. So first I'll take the LEDs out of the reflector and then cut them apart. Then I'll make a little light bar where I can put all the reflectors back in in a row. Then I'll put a clear finish on everything. Then I can assemble the light bar. First I'll put all the reflectors in and then an LED for each one and wire them all up in series. And add a connector. Next I'll wire the two solar panels together. Well, I don't know what I'm looking at. That's okay. You don't have to know. And add a connector. Hey, look at that. It works. Then I can put the solar panels in the little frame and install the light bar. Okay, time to get this thing installed. How do you know where to drill? I previously marked where the studs are. Hey, what is the Velcro for? That'll just keep the solar panels from falling off the windowsill. So I made a cable the correct length from the solar panels down to the lights. I'm just connecting that up here. 
and get the lower one plugged in. Okay, it's all done. Yep, see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.